Hello, and thank you for joining this ESP tutorial about how to design an accelerator using the System C or C++ design flow. First, we're going to generate a template which is customized based on the specification you give to an interactive script. Then, you have to implement some application-specific functions, in particular the compute function and load stored memory and validation. All steps from here on are completely automated. An optional manual step is the design space exploration with HLS, but we will show this on a more advanced tutorial. When you run the generation script for an accelerator, this will create for you the source files for high level synthesis, the description of the private local memory shape, an XML file that is used for integration later on, a unit test bench, synthesis scripts, bare metal application, and Linux device driver and user space application skeletons. The manual steps you're required to implement are really the application specific ones, the ones you really want to focus on. You are required to implement computation in your accelerator source files, load and dump memory functions from the test bench, and the validation. The automated steps allows you to run behavioral simulation, HLS, generate the private local memory, and also run RTL simulation. An optional design space exploration step through HLS can be done by editing the pre-generated files that the script creates for you. We will save this for a more advanced tutorial later on. Let's move to the code and run the initialization script to create an accelerator that implements multiply and accumulate. So we'll give it a name, we select the Stratus HLS flow in this case, we confirm the ESP root path and then give it a unique ID for integration into the system. Then we can list the configuration registers. In this case, we have a length for the vectors to be multiplied and accumulate. We can set the default size and optionally a maximum size for it. In this case, we keep it the same. Then we add the register name vec, which is the number of vectors that we want to accumulate in a single batch of execution. And finally, we add the register, which we call mac n, that determines and in this particular case, the number of iterations that we want the accelerator to run on multiple batches of vectors before waking up the CPU. We select the bit width, and then we tell the script how to compute the size or the memory footprint of the input data set and of the output data set. These two values can be a function of the configuration registers. So in this case, we write the expression mac length times mac vec for the input and just mac vec for the output because this is a multiply and accumulate. Next, the chunking factor determines how you split the computation. The chunking factor of one means that the private local memory can hold an entire set of input and outputs. The last parameter is instead the number of iterations your accelerator will run, and this can also be a function of the configuration registers. Next, we go and look inside the HLS folder. So we see these files have all been generated by the script. The XML file describes what the accelerator looks like and lists its configuration registers. The memory list contains the shape and the name of the private local memory buffers, plus all of the parallel operations required to execute. Notice that these change based on the bit width of the DMA engine because we're compacting multiple data accesses. Moving to the source code of the accelerator, we go and look for the compute function, which by default is copying data from one location to another. What we do here is we make a few changes to implement the multiply and accumulate. First, we need an output ping pong variable because we have to switch the ping pong buffer for output at a different rate with respect to the input buffer. This is because we're doing multiplication and accumulation. So the output has not the same size as the input. 
then we delete the pre-existing computation function and we replace it with the multiply and accumulation. As you can see, most of the variables you need have already been created for you. We've changed a few parameters, in particular in the loop, you see that we advance by two elements at a time because we need a sample and a coefficient to do the multiplication and then we accumulate with the current result into the arc variable. This is the logic that determines whether you write on a ping buffer or a pong buffer. Every time we reach the end of a vector equal to max length, we switch the input ping pong buffer and start accumulating the gain from zero. All of this code is available for you to look at and study together with this tutorial. Notice that these loops already take into account the chunking factor that you select and make sure that you never overflow the private lock in memory. Here's where we've added the new ping pong buffer uh, variable for the upper buffer. Finally, the outermost loop uses your expression for the number of iterations to determine how many times this computation should run at any given invocation. Then we can look at the HPP file, which describes the structure of the accelerator. And you see that all of your data structures and arrays have been already mapped to private local memories for you. During the design space exploration, you are free to edit the memory list and map these to different memories. As you can see, the type of memory mapping changes based on the width of the DMA engine. There are basic directives here that are already used to synthesize the accelerator, but you are free to add your own when you do design space exploration. And you can also define multiple sets of directives to have the HLS tool generate multiple RTL implementations. Let's take a look at the test bench, and in particular, let's open the system.cpp file. We go and look for the load memory function, which has to be customized for our application. In particular, we may want to change how we initialize the input. In this case, we don't change the default value for the samples, but we make sure coefficient never exceeds mac back by using the modulo operator. Then we initialize the golden output, which is basically just computing multiply and accumulate over the input vectors and storing the results into an array. The validation function in this case is already correct. The only thing that needs to be done is checking that the output equals the golden output. Now we can go to the design folder. In this case, we selected the uh, VCU 118 development board and run the behavioral simulation with make, mac, exit. Then we can run HLS. This generates the private local memory and run Stratus HLS for us. The first time you execute the HLS target, it will take a while because the tool needs to generate all of the RTL resources. Here we skipped to the end. Now that HLS is completed, we can run the simulation target for our accelerator. This target is the actual unit test bench and runs two types of simulation. One is the system C simulation within the environment of the high level synthesis tool. In this case, this is Stratus HLS. If you had chosen Vivado HLS through the initialization script, this would run a C behavioral simulation within the Vivado HLS environment. Next, Using the same test bench, you're going to see the execution of all of the RTL implementations 
that were described into the project TCL since the script for Stratus. In a more advanced tutorial, we will show you how to add more HLS configurations to this script. From the ESP team, thank you for watching this video. We hope you liked it and we'd really appreciate your feedback on the comments below. If you have any questions or suggestions, please reach out to us through our mailing list or GitHub issue page. You can find all the information on the ESP website. Thank you and see you at the next video tutorial.